Good day to you one and all and welcome to Justin Hawkins Rides Again, the podcast. Uh, this week I'm joined by Pat Finnerty and I know a lot of you guys are huge Pat Finnerty enthusiasts, rightly so. Um, but for those of you that are unaware, Pat Finnerty is a musician who also runs an incredibly popular YouTube channel where he dissects songs to understand why they aren't very good. Um, and it's called What Makes This Song Stink? It is fantastic. Um, this is a great conversation because Pat is incredibly knowledgeable about music, um, songwriting and the culture that surrounds the music trade. Um, and uh, th he's got some brilliant anecdotes about Frankie Poulain because um, Pat and I have played together on a few occasions and uh, some of his recollections of those moments are hilarious. Um, after this, make sure you check out his YouTube channel. Um, I'll put a link in the description and you can also um, listen to this uh, as a podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all of the other podcast apps. In the meantime, please, to enjoy. Again. Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Today, I'm talking to YouTube cult sensation, Pat Finnerty, who's a dear friend of mine. We go back years and years, and this is going to be a long-form chat wherein we discuss... What should we discuss? I mean, let's just talk about it. There's a, there's a lot to talk about. There is a lot to talk about, and we're going to be doing yep. exactly that. Justin Hawkins rides again. What the f***? Again, again. Do you have that effect on people where they go to pieces, and even if they've played the same thing every day, when Pat Finnerty's gaze is upon them, it goes wrong? It was, even though there was a clam in there, it was really exciting <laughs> to see, like, a live like a, a live take um is that but, what you, uh, that's an american one what's a clam then just a, a dodgy is that what we call a bum note yeah so yeah. you guys always win as far as the like the jargon goes like you know chuffed you know chuffed, chuffed is, is awesome win. yeah yeah you know um, chuffed is great you know say, knackered. That makes me proud yeah knackered is awesome mm -hmm. for tired you know i mean yeah. you guys you guys talk like the beatles you talk like spinal tap i mean you guys win um but we uh, we we have you beat as far as like a shitty note goes because we say clam. Uh, um, so you can use that. Where does it over come there. from then? What, what's the origins of the of the expression clam? And why I don't, don't you know, say note have, before it or after I'm, it? I'm really happy that someone came up with it. So next time that Frankie, you, you know, for uh, you're you're going for a black shuck and Frankie doesn't hit that F sharp or whatever, you could say like you know what's that a clam bake over there, Frank? <laughs> You know, <laughs> it does that. Uh, well, Frankie tends to do like a, a clam wander where he'll um, he'll completely lose his. Well, I mean, I wanted to actually remind you of one of the times that you came on stage with us in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and I think we played. Um, did we do like two Brian Adams songs? We did, and I think that this is a good time to tell everybody because you were in my video, What Makes This Song Stink? Mm -hmm. And my second video that I ever did, I was like, hey, man, I'm going to need you. And you came in, and you did it, and it was amazing, and I want to talk more about that later. But people are now are saying like, hey, man, you got to get Justin Hawkins in your videos, man. I'm like, <laughs> I did. Yeah, that's um, the first thing you did. I, I, I did. Um, and I knew that I needed to um and I did because we go back we actually do and and um our we've known each other a long time now and yeah. uh through our mutual buddy Tom Lesnar who started it all the great Tom Lesnar legend uh, and uh I was playing in his band Sweatheart and we would open up for you guys when you came to Philly and the tradition with our mutual friend as well Brian Langan um or the tradition was always play a Brian Adams song. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's that's that, that's what we did. And let me just tell everybody a quick story. Um, uh, one of the best VIPs I've I don't maybe the only VIP I've ever been to because I didn't have to pay for it. But um, you were doing like a, a meet and greet, darkness meet and greet, and you got some super fans right, and they're there, and they're watching the sound check. And during the sound check was when uh, Langan was singing um because i couldn't make that gig i think i was gigging that night but wow. i was there for the sound check and and langan did um i need somebody i think he did i, I need, need somebody, somebody somebody like you right and yeah. you and langan were doing that together and you're practicing in sound check so fast forward to the meet and greet uh people are asking questions fans are asking questions and one of the guys one of your fans and i'm not gonna slag him off uh, use the UK term for you there. <laughs> Not going to slag him off too much, but he said, 
Um, I, I, why, why are you guys doing a Brian Adams song? And <laughs> you're, I'm not making this up. You, your answer is still one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my entire life. You just said immediately, you go, the only thing that Brian Adams is better at than songwriting is singing. <laughs> or, no, the only thing that Brian Adams is better at than singing is songwriting. Next question, please. It was think, yeah, best. but I got that from Brian's dad, I think. That was, wasn't that one of, that's one of Mr. Langan Sr.'s uh, oh, okay. pearls of wisdom. And I, I think it was something that, um, or maybe it wasn't. Maybe, I'm sure I got that from Brian somehow. He okay. said, I, I bought one of his artworks and then he had that, he sent me that and it was written down. And I think it was an illustration of his father telling him that. <laughs> Just think that's, about that. Okay, so it comes from Scranton, Pennsylvania. It does. <laughs> and then crosses the pond and then comes back over the pond and gets used in Philadelphia. It's a real Amazing. cultural exchange. Amazing. Yeah. But I remember when we were doing, I need somebody, somebody mm -hmm. like that one that's when frankie and i was really determined to sort of you know teach the song to frankie I, it was so important because and then there's a, yeah. a really Huge. interesting bridge or middle eight section there always it? is there always is yeah and that's when uh frankie meandered off into no man's land and uh, it was clam after clam it was a clam parade it was really. But he looked so cool doing it. He looked <laughs> so cool doing it. I mean, it. I, I, at first I was furious, and I glanced, I glanced accusingly at him, and then realized, oh, he's he's so cool. Here's the thing: if you're not familiar, everybody should be that watches your channel. But if you're not familiar with Justin's band, The Darkness, um, <laughs> get into them. And for Frankie's the bass player, and he looks amazing on stage. Always has like a leather kind of look happening a perma fro kind of thing that's always happening fu manchu probably and always looks great on stage but i actually think he looks better during the day when he's in his all adidas tracksuit yeah, yeah. it's unbelievable he goes from tracksuit to that look in incredible street frankie is really inimitable um but i, I recently bought a suit and I thought, oh, yeah, it's a lovely satin suit. It's made by Gucci. Oh, I spent all my money on it. And as soon as I put it on, I thought, yeah, this is going to look better on Frankie, so I'm going to give it to him now. You gave it to Frank? <laughs> so I got to, yeah. I can't wear it, especially not in his presence. You know. One last Frankie story real quick, and then we can move on to other bullshit, yeah. um, is that uh, Frank, when I... When we did It's Only Love, the Brian Adams, Tita Turner song at what the truck in Philadelphia. Is, um, let me I interject played, there. Yeah. Is that the best rock duet ever recorded? I think it might be because there's not that many good ones. I mean, you got like, <laughs> we got tonight or uh, love lift us up where we belong. And, you know, for the most part, they never really deliver. People are going to say, like, leather and lace. You know, it's sure as shit in, uh, dancing in the streets with Jagger and Bowie. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, so it could be. But under pressure is actually. Oh, under pressure. Of course it is. Yeah. It goes under yeah. pressure. It's only love. And then there's a huge gulf and a lot of really shitty stuff at the bottom. Is that right? Right. Yeah. Because whenever you're thinking about karaoke songs, it's always just like, let's do a fun duet. And then. Three songs later, someone's like, let's do something from Aladdin. You know what I mean? Because like they've just run out. Which you know, there should, some great, there should be more. Great stuff in Aladdin soundtrack soundtrack. I mean, what what's the big one? It's um a whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. Right. <laughs> a um, new fantastic but, like, point of view. And then they always wait to bring the harmony in at the end of those songs. Like it's like you you yeah. want it, you want it, you want it. And then the I'll take you anywhere. There's time to share. Um, that comes in at the end. Unlike Kid Rock, uh, back to where you came in, in the song Picture mm -hmm. with Cheryl Crow, Oof. and it's a four and a half to five and a half minute long drudge, and they never harmonize. Like they're they're just Do they uh, sing in unison or just individually? They sing in unison, wow. she's singing low. The thing's one of the worst, one of the worst things ever. But back to It's Only Love when we did that at the Trocadero. Um, I was playing guitar and 
you had three it was awesome you had three wawas set oh, yeah. all around the stage yeah. like this yeah. is so your rig rundown and i've seen your rig down but it was amazing to like walk it it's one boost so it's just a marshall i got to play your paul mm-hmm. it's a marshall and it's a paul and it's one boost and there's three wawas all throughout the stage so if you no matter where you are work in the crowd yeah. you've got a wawa but you have wawa potential there is um yeah. Yeah, you can wah anywhere, mm. and uh, and I was using them. Yeah, so I remember you that. Know, I, <laughs> you might I, be the only person that did use them on the night. I think. I think I was, <laughs> and because I mean, you know, I don't have three wah stations no. usually ready to go. So if I do, and this factors back into Frankie, where I took the solo and sound check, and it was kind of like a standard eight bar. For, I don't forget how long I went, and then I, it was like a breakdown before I bring the the, the riff back in. The bam, bam. Yeah and i just kind of waited and uh and frankie was like and i was waiting a little bit too long but frankie walks over to me he goes soaking up the moment oh yeah <laughs> and i was Brilliant. like i was like god i was like goddamn ready and frankie's like take as much time as you need <laughs> like he was basically just saying like soak, soak it up son brilliant you know That's grab such a it. beautiful yeah. moment I'll tell you I another Frankie Clam moment. Like um we've all got into this to the habit of glaring accusingly at whoever does the clam, and often it's me, you know, occasionally it's Dan. It's when it's Dan, it really sounds like a clanger. You know, you can really mm-hmm. it's there's no hiding. Especially like if it's one of those songs where he's holding it down and I'm running about. Right. Um but you know, there's often a, a, a little Frankie slip up because he's you know, he's gesticulating a lot, he's pointing, there's a lot of that stuff. And he's he working, does a lot of pointing. Yeah, he he's working the crowd, light. you know. He's, he's doing all that. <laughs> and um, at one point... Pointing. <laughs> there was a clam. Um, and it was a fairly obvious clam. And I looked, I glared over at him and he did this. <laughs> and I was like, like just don't, ter- just, don't, don't worry about it. Just put me in my place. It's like, okay, none of my, nothing right. to see I'm here. I'm not going to have it. Don't even look. Yeah, I think we all reach the point where you stop looking, right? So it's just like, I think it's kind of like... You give somebody the bird, or as my uh, late Uncle Dave, who's one of my favorite guys ever, he said, don't give people the bird when they cut you off in traffic. Give them the thumbs down. It pisses them <laughs> off more, which is which is true. Because it's it gentler, does. Like, yeah. Yeah, if you just like, because that's just like, this is like saying like, fuck you, but this is like saying your whole thing. Like yeah. everything that has arrived, everything that you are, you know, and it gets to people. So, wow, um, you know, I feel like I always thought about if you get cut up in traffic in the UK, I'd like to have like a novelty sized, I don't know, maybe an inflatable highway code that I can just sort of shake at them. You know? <laughs> yeah, read read this, good. you know. Right. Um, but like, you know, as far as clams in your band goes, it's like kind of like the day you're having. Like if someone cuts me off in traffic, I'm having a good day. I don't care. If so, but if I'm like running late or I'm or I'm, you know, pissed about something, that's when I'm going to lay on the horn or whatever. Clams, the same thing. If you're getting along and everything's great, you don't care. But if like someone's kind of bugging the shit out of you and then they hit the clam, that's when you look at them, <laughs> you know, yeah, um, it's true. but, uh, you know, I was, and um, I always, Frank, Frankie didn't show up to, uh, well, he was, he was, he showed up late to a writing session. So we were jamming. I thought, I'll, I'll take the bass, you know, and I was facing away and I hit a shocking clam. I think I might've been six semitones out. It was a real, yeah, it was a it was a rotter, is what it was. Right, and then I looked around at Rufus, who was sort of staring incredulously and in an accusatory way, and I went like this. Just carry on. That's, so yeah, there's that just, option as well. Just carry know? on. I mean, I always feel for the bass players because, like, clam, like, and I love how much you're embracing clam right now in this conversation. Mm. Like a guitar clam, everybody, like the crowd's gonna hear it. It, you know, the the people in the room. You know, the people will notice. Someone will say, nobody nobody heard it. They will. Yeah. Um, but, like, you know, nobody heard it, man. Don't worry. Nobody heard it. Yeah, they did. But, like, the bass clan, like, the walls hear the bass clan. Like, it's just there's <laughs> yeah. nowhere to run. Yeah, you can hear the, the bass. Entire- if, for whatever reason, you're still queuing up to get in and there's a bass clan in the early part of the set, you're going to hear it from outside the building. Absolutely. That's the issue. Um, like, there's a guy sleeping a couple of blocks away that could probably kind of hear it through the walls. So it's like yeah. I feel bad for the bass players as far as as far as that yeah. goes. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot at stake. Um, and if you're pointing a lot, then you you are gonna <laughs> the occasional. <laughs> he does point a lot. He does point a bit. Great Some move, people though. say he points Great too move. much, but I don't, it's, but it is a, that's his signature thing. So. <laughs> 
Yeah. Great Frank talk. Yeah. I don't know why we got him really hard on the on the clam bake. It's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's have a look at this uh, dossier that I have here. Sure. Oh, okay. So here is here is a description of you. Are you the cult band version of Rick Beato? Um, the cult what version? Like a cult band version of Rick Beato. Yeah, I guess so. I think that's that's that could be accurate. Yeah. Is it because you're irreverent and then you're looking for stuff that's shit as opposed to dwelling on the greatness of things? Yeah, I think I think it's more of a uh outsider kind of looking in um you know if any the the way that i think in my whole approach of youtube is just to kind of like deconstruct all of the the tropes that we mm. see over and over again you know start it from the thumbnail mm. you know yeah. all the way down you know it goes all the way down the gear in the background yeah. um <laughs> you know the sauce chords the the i am i know more about music and i'm not slagging i'm i'm just saying that overall and i'm not just talking about beato here but like the overall like musical competition that is youtube like okay, i know so more about do, this can you than just you do. tell me what a sauce chord is again how do i do that Sauces are pretty much just like twos and fours for the most part. But then someone's going to say in the comments, like, no, I actually, you know, but like, you know, you got your triad, which is your one, three, five, right? So it's like, that's your major minor chords. Mm -hmm. If you add a two or a four, that's where you're getting into the sus and it's the suspension kind of shit. So it's like, you know, when you play an A, but you have a B in there because B is is the second uh, Beato in in A or a nine. Add that B, yeah, right, or a nine. So that's that's your that's your sus kind of Go world. Ahead. But I feel like twos and fours um, are where the sus comes in, and then nine is kind of on its own island. Nine's just a nine, which is a very nineties chord. Yeah, ironically, I like a nine. Yeah. I love a nine actually. Um, I noticed that when you play piano, stick a nine in there, and it sounds posh. You can do any chord sequence you like, and if you put a nine on every single chord, and then I, I, I thought, yeah, no, no, try that in, in theory, and I started doing it, and it's like, oh my God, I sound like a piano player, but I'm definitely not. Um, and then I started listening to actual piano players. They're doing the same fucking thing. I think that's actually the secret to sounding like a pro pianist is to put a yeah. nine in every single chord, and then you just sound like uh, Elton, uh, Elton John. I mean, they, they, they have it made, right? Like, because everything sounds classy. It's like, it's like they have the equivalent to us would be like, you need like all the reverb you got with like a wang bar with the mm. Bigsby. And then you do like a, a, a six chord and you like, and then it sounds kind of like classy, kind of like jazzy. Mm. I mean, those fucks, like they just put a nine in the root and, you know, and the key to piano, because I stink at piano too, but the key to piano I find when I watch all my buddies that play piano is that you don't want to go in that move where it's just like you're moving the chord yeah. up and down yeah. the same one. You, the classy move on piano I've found is that you don't want the root um, to be the ba like the bass note right. to be the root of the chord, right? Yeah. So if you learn just that one inversion. It, it does dress it up a lot. And then when you get fancy is when you start putting like the sixes and the nines and the that in the root. But yeah. all the awesome piano players, they're all grabbing chords. They're not moving their hand at all. They know yeah. where all of the chords are yeah. in one position. I actually, so, like, I think I know how to do that. I think I got like, that. Yeah, I've got that bit. Yeah. Okay. So you could do it all without moving at all. So yeah, I can like, more or less find the, sharp. you know, find the inversions just by doing this stuff. Yeah. So that's pretty good. But if then you can, I forget can, them and I panic, can, especially on the night, you know. I panic. Right. But you can get me like a F sharp seven real quick, like just like that. Yeah, I think I'd be able to. Let, let, let me find a piano. Um, but not on the F sharp root though. That's that's the oh. key. So you'd want to have the so you'd play an E, right? Is, is that what right. you want to do? So uh, so the E would be your your root. Yeah, F sharp. Because the seven you want the yeah, B flat it, and what's the other one? I mean, speaking of Beato, he'd love this fucking conversation. C sharp me? would it be? It'd be C sharp, wouldn't it? Is that right? With a B, it would be an A. If you're doing a seven, 
Oh, with a B. Always... Okay, sorry. I thought you were talking about an F sharp with a with a seven. No, F like an F sharp would be you know like a like an F sharp seven. The seven is is E. Yeah. Like the dominant. Yeah, but would you play that e. below the root or would you go for an inversion where it's over? I think like the classy people, like I'm saying, I'm thinking they're they're putting that E in the root, but you got to <sighs> watch out. I mean, it's already done. But are they playing the root but, at the same time, or are they just moving the root down? Not really sure. I mean, every time I think that I'm going to like practice piano, I play for a little bit, my hand gets tired. <laughs> but I think that's why. We, yeah, but yeah, I see what you're saying. The, Does um, your hand ever get tired? Like I'm like doing that because then I'll start to do some like boogie woogie stuff, you know, and or I'll start playing like ELO, and I'll mm. and I'll be doing like you know. The city streets are empty now. And I'm like, you know, doing that. And then I'm gassed halfway through. And then I'm just like, all right, I'm not going to put into this. But I, w I wish that I do. Maybe maybe at some point or I'll get like a, a keyboard that has lighter keys. Yeah. Or, you know, closer together as well. There you go. Yeah. Just an option. What are you drinking there? Grapefruit juice? Pineapple juice. juice. Pineapple juice. The choice of champions. Oh, sure. It's a delight. Um, hang on, let me have a look at this ludicrous dossier. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so your fans are more protective of you than Rick Beato's. Do you think that... Um, oh. do, you, they, do they ride into battle because uh, the Finity brand needs protect, Or is it because... Have you, I don't know, are you like a cult leader of some sort? What's happened to you? I think it's because there's less of them. <laughs> <laughs> so they're <laughs> noisy. Like they, they need to band together. So you they know? like it's, the it's... underdog status as a fan collective as well as, you know, as well as what you are kind of thing. Yeah, I think I think so. I think that, you know, they, they've, they've grabbed on. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, a lot of my videos, they're not for the faint of heart, you know? I mean, they move fast and they're weird and, you know, a lot of things... You know, a lot of information's coming in, mm. or sometimes not a lot of information. <laughs> sometimes I'm going on like a God knows tangent that I'm going on. But um, I think the people that get it really get it and uh, and and are relieved. And, and a lot of the messages I get from people is just like, I've been waiting for something like this. You know, I felt this way or whatever. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've sent it to my buddies and these were the jokes that we used to tell. Like, yeah. and it's just a very, um, it, it just hits for the people that get it. And then the people that don't, I mean, that's why my numbers, I don't know if I'm ever going to, you know, like back to what I was saying before about the tropes. Like, I really can't, I really can't do a lot of those fundamental YouTube things. Mm. I can't do them. They it breaks my heart. But I bet what I would have some about? higher numbers. What are you talking about? You're talking numbers. about like um, talking about manipulating the algorithm by di using sort of clickbait titles and um, carefully. Who would ever them? use a clickbait I've never title? Done, I mean, <laughs> present company. <laughs> this one's called F "You Pat Finity." <laughs> um, I mean, you have the most amazing clickbait. Uh, oh. titles. It's unbelievable. Yeah, but once but you're in, you're, you're, you're rewarded. But I some... love you, and I know what you're doing. You know, it's it's not like, you know, is guitar overrated? <laughs> you know, it's just like, you know, with the and just the same old kind of things that just keep happening that I know. Like, my thumbnails, they do kind of look like shit. I'll say it right here. <laughs> but they are, they're me. I can't yeah. do anything else and I'm and I know that there's moves that I could probably do but I um you were talking in the in the last show about content mm. and I think content's just so gross you know like you were saying that um I forget the clip but it, I'm paraphrasing but it was mm. kind of like I thought what you said was really amazing where you were like um content is something that the artist has to do to show their art but their art is what's gonna last right yeah but like this content something to that effect yeah and i and, and i was just like yeah because if you're an artist and you're putting stuff out the only way that people are going to really see it is if you make it you have to have the content yeah. with it and it gets really, so it's not enough the, that you the do lines are so the lines are so blurry aren't they because like it was always clear in the olden days when you had a product, which was the album that you'd made. It was the the other stuff that was 
you know, the kind of activities that you'd you need to wash yourself after you've done them, but it was a necessary evil, and it was it was called promo. I think yeah. that's what that that whole promo concept has completely changed, and it's all about online stuff. So that becomes the promo is now content, isn't it? Or content's promo, and art remains the art, the thing that we must always protect. And well, the art is in the link below. <laughs> Right. Or yeah. it's like it's okay. in the bio, like the yeah. art is living in a fucking bio that doesn't exist right yeah. now. You know, it's living in an Instagram bio. Like I spent months and months and months working on something. Mm. Click the link in the bio. And then, <laughs> you know and I mean? then you'll see that far fewer people will actually consume the art than the content. Yeah. And they'll like the content, you know, um, and, but will they actually go? And it's just kind of like, mm. uh, it's that endless cycle. And, and, you know, as I, I frown when I say this, but as I become like a content creator, um, <laughs> it's like constantly swimming in my head where I'm like, you know, and that's why I stopped doing my podcast because I felt like what I want to do is, is the, is the videos where I can explore and I can like get, you know, have these weird long jokes that, that, uh, and, and that's kind of what inspires me. And I felt like my podcast was just getting a little too, a little too takey, a little too hot, a little too, you know, what do you mean by takey? Like I was searching for things to talk about. You know, I was searching for bad songs instead of them coming to me and 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 me having an honest uh, feeling towards a song. Mm. Like, um, I just heard Not Fade Away. I've never been in a Not Fade Away. What is Not Fade Away? Then my love Not Fade Away. Dirt, 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 dirt. You're going to give your love to me. Um, but the, okay, you know that in the UK, I'm not sure if it... I'm not sure if it happened in the States, but that particular song was re-lyricked and repurposed for, I think, probably Maxell video recording. Did you get? Did you have that out there? We had Maxwell, but I mean, I don't remember that ad. But it was like a re-record, not fade away, re-record, not fade away. Okay. Yeah, I'd probably like that one more. And here's the thing. People say all the time, like, hey, you're going after low-hanging fruit. Like, go after some classics. Go after some, like, you know. And and I get that. I do. And Not Fade Away, I was thinking to myself, is one of those songs that is respected. It's, you know, Buddy Holly, The Stones did it, Dylan did it, everybody did it, everybody does Not Fade Away, The Dead do it, everybody. And I'm always just like, this is where I'm taking a leak, you know? Like, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, and people are probably going to get mad at me for not liking it, but that's like one of the tunes where I'm just like, I wouldn't do an episode on it, but I'm like, mm. that's one that I... I, I would consider because it's but something you've usually that always, got, always kind of bugged me. Yeah, but when you do what makes this song stink, mm -hmm. you've often got like a actual a musical explanation as to why it's stinky. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that ex the example of the, um, <clears throat> what's that st all summer long? Is it called? What's the the Kid Rock? All one? summer long. All that was summer the one long. that you <laughs> that you were in. Yeah, yeah, which is dreadful. I remember when that was... Uh, Oh God, I just remember it. And you know, you've had decades to marinate in that hatred, and mm -hmm. and I thought you, you know, you you put your points across in quite a relaxed, like like a man who had meditated on this. <laughs> you know, it's um, yeah, it's admirable, really. But what is it about? Um, what what is it musically about? Not fade away that offends you. It's not, I guess it doesn't offend me. And by no means am I saying that I put this up against like a, you know, like a fucking uh, puddle of mud song or something like that. Or like Charlie Puth, you know, Marvin Gaye's song or the Ed Sheeran song that rips off, you know, everyone's talking about that song. And I'm like, yeah, it's got the same groove, but it, you know, if you put that next to let's get it on, I mean, let's just remember that the Ed Sheeran song stinks. Like, it's just <laughs> kind of like, you know, it's like, it is the same groove and he is kind of riffing in a way. And who do you want to hear riff Marvin Gaye or Ed Sheeran? And, um, I want to hear Marvin Gaye 10 times out of 10, but you know, Ed Sheeran has 3.5 billion views on YouTube. So why do you think that, you is? know, what do you think's happened there? Uh, people like nice, I guess his voice is well, good. Do you think it's, do you think like 
How many decades pass before you reject what Marvin Gaye does? Because you're talking about 1971, aren't you? Yeah. You're talking about 50 years ago. Yeah, I know. And the idea, like, I, 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 I can't imagine sort of saying to somebody who's of an age where Ed, an Ed Sheeran album is, you know, a viable proposition. Like, so let's say a, a 14 year old person, individual, and you mm -hmm. say to them, you present them just like, here is a current artist um, who's sold millions of records. Everybody loves him. He's always touring the world. Um, he's affable. He's like the boy next door. And he does this kind of Marvin Gaye stuff. <clears throat> mm. And then, or there's this dead bloke from 1971 called Marvin yeah. Gaye. <laughs> who, you won't be able to go and see him live. Uh, you probably can't get your hands on any merch. Um, and he loved you, cocaine and his, and his dad killed him. <laughs> um, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, you and I are gonna are gonna choose MG. Yes, but I wonder what is it. I mean, it's got to be the boy next door thing, hasn't it? I think so. Boy next door that's currently I, living hasn't been killed by his dad. Uh, doesn't do as much cocaine from what we've read, and is and is a nice guy, a right? Really he's got to nice be guy. a nice guy. He's a lovely or guy, if yeah. he. If he's not, we'll find out years down the road. But right now, I mean, the guy's out there in a fucking hooded sweatshirt. I kind of have to give it to him in a way. But like yeah. at the same time, um, it I think it just goes back to what you were saying that the it, we're becoming these people that like you know people old man cloud all that shit. I mean, I'm sure you feel that you become like a man of a certain age, mm -hmm. and you're just kind of like yeah, but it but it was better. <laughs> like yeah there's no I, doubt about it music was better. there is for me i i guess that's the the fight that i'm always gonna fight not to say that there aren't great bands now i mean there's great bands that i, that I love bands right now They're, i love the viagra boys mm -hmm. i love big thief i i love like there's there's tons of bands right now that are great i'm not saying that there aren't it's just like marvin Gaye was on the radio you know what i mean yeah like the Viagra boys are not on the radio and I'm not comparing Viagra boys to Marvin Gaye, but you, you know what I mean? Mm. And it's just like they're. So you're saying they, that the, the stuff that's great is, is residing so far below the radar that unless you go looking for it, you probably not yeah, find it. I'm just, yeah. The top of the mountain has become, and, and this is awful that we're having this like, this know, is too old, today, man. man. And there's only one cloud. Yeah. We're both shouting at it. It's brilliant. Right. But the music today, man, I mean, it's always <laughs> pop music. A lot of it has always stunk. You know what I mean? Mm. You've always had to deal with that. But I mean, I listened to don't you want me baby the other day. Mm. That fucking song is amazing. Yeah. I mean, don't you want me? Like I was working as a waitress in a cocktail. Bar. I mean, it's moving, mm. and then it's got the darn, 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 darn. Hell of a and riff. then the huge. Don't you want me, baby? I mean, that song is amazing. That was a hit, you know. And uh, like, I'm not saying there isn't there aren't great pop songs right now, but I mean, like, I just I, I'm taking I'm taking Human League yeah, on Human that League one, you know, every time. <laughs> Yeah. yeah and I, I was a kid when that came out so that's the whole thing too i mean i was like three years old so mm. it's not like i don't know you know it's not like you know and and i feel like people can always go back and will always go back but the people that are never going to search mm. and they've always existed that are never going to really do you know any kind of digging as far as music goes that are just going to be handed whatever's there on whatever playlist mm -hmm. i just feel like you know there's going to be a lot more bullshit coming down coming down the pike but does that mean there's more there's more content for you to uh or more sorry art for you to create yeah <laughs> i think and for you too buddy <laughs> yeah, you know there's always I mean, gonna be shitty stuff the challenge for me is like um you dress it up so nice. Though. I, I try and make you're, it. You're like you're like a fucking politician. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm like I know what he's saying. Yeah. You know, but like if you brought this into a court of law right now, he's he's walking out hands yeah. clean. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it's still, I like, suppose it's more about the, the things scone? that I don't say, isn't it? In those in those instances, but I mean, <clears throat> it is challenging. I mean, I, I'll go back and look at things like uh, and. The, the thing about the YouTube stuff is like I'm forcing myself to listen to things in a different way, basically. Mm -hmm. And stuff that I've always hated, I'll always find something that actually I get now. Yeah. You know, there's, there's something I, in the energy I agree. of it. You know. 
and I've, I'm not going to say that I've softened at all, but since I've started doing this, I feel like I can see what I can understand what is popular or what I can, I can really, I mean, I always could, but I can all, I can really, I don't have sympathy for a band like train because I do feel like they are just the ultimate bottom feeders. Mm. Um, so I, I'll, I'll go at, I'll go at Pat Monahan and the boys every time that they put a song out. But you know, there are some songs where I'm just like, yeah, it stinks, but I don't really want to, you know, I, yeah. let them let them go you know like there is something good to this if it gets to this if enough people do like a thing there is something in it you know what i mean so i can appreciate that there's uh you know those moments that that happen in these songs and and they are well where you where you have to concede that they stink mm. i think pop music's just i find it difficult to listen to it sometimes because i've i've actually been involved in um you know some fairly cynical pop writing scenarios where I would mm -hmm. go to um, a writing session and then I'd be told what the tempo is going to be, what the artist is that we're looking for, things to things to avoid in in terms of thematic content. Yeah. Um, sometimes they tell me what key they want it in. It's like, well, what do you fucking want me to do? It's like you've, you've told, let's type that into a computer and then you let the AI do it now. But yeah. at, at some point, there's this trend where they don't want to hear a whole song. They want to hear a verse, a chorus, and a bridge. And then that's how they're judging the quality of the song. I mean, you can't tell a story with those three segments if you're trying to do something that's got anything lyrically interesting. That's not going to... Can't, you can't present that and, and expect people to understand what you're trying to achieve, really. But they, they make you stop there and make you do another one, make you do another one. And then I suppose somebody like David Guetta glues them all together, hits send, and then the internet goes mental. <clears throat> it really yeah, is a cynical I mean, process. It, it, I don't think it comes from anybody's soul or, you know, they're not, they're not catching stuff that's in the ether. It's a cynical process, you know. It's like, you know, you guys have Starburst over there, right? Fruit Starburst? Um, Yellow. Fruit chews, you, they're individually yeah, wrapped, yeah, that's it. different well, well, colors. We used to call them opal fruits. <laughs> See, again, you guys usually win. <laughs> opal best. fruits or starburst. I'm taking opal, opal fruits. fruits. But anyway, so starburst is like, it's there's five colors. Yeah. You got your cherry, you got your pink, you got your uh, orange, yeah. you got your yellow. Maybe there's only four, actually. No, but the a bullshit purple ones, one, isn't there? what's that? I think there's a purple one. Oh, and a purple one, right. So it's like, the bullshit ones are like, um, either the bullshit ones are the, are the yellow and the orange. People want the red and the pink. Those are like mm. the headliners, right? But here's what's happening. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going somewhere with this. You know, songs, the pink and the purple ones, the pink and the red ones are much better than the yellow and the orange. But if when you fight through the yellow and the orange, that pink fucking you know it it plays it comes through yeah. and the and there's a payoff right mm -hmm. and i feel like you you eat the whole and i haven't had starburst in a long time but you eat the whole starburst and it's fucking great mm. and now with american idol and the fact that people just come up and now i don't say now i mean for the last 20 years but with all of the shows and the fact that songs are just a verse a chorus get to your high note as quick as you possibly can mm -hmm. let me know what this fucking high note is I, I gotta hit a high note you better not be aiming that at, at me <laughs> No, okay. we'll, we'll get to that okay. because your high note is actually above the high note. Oh, okay. But I mean, I feel like now it's just all, then they Starburst actually changed and they did a pack that was just the pink and the red ones. So you could just buy those two. Mm -hmm. And back in my, in my fruit choose days, and I'll still pop every now and then. Mm -hmm. If you get that, it's an overload. There's, there's too much pink and purple. You need that yellow. You need that orange. And that makes the pink and the the red, you know, really pop. And I feel like that's what songs are now. It's just that red and pink pack of just like, give us everything really, really quick. Don't let us marinate it, you know? I mean, what would Bohemian Rhapsody do right now? That, that wouldn't exist. How could it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that song is insane. That song is absolutely insane. And the fact that it's one of the biggest hits ever is insane, mm. you know? Yeah. So you're amazing. saying that the yellow, so you need, basically you need shitty stuff to make the good stuff seem more good. 
I think so. Or just like to have it more of a of a of a of a uh, comprehensive, just a just an overall uh, have it more of a a an, a, a a total. Um, a, a full a full idea where yeah. it's just like okay we're we're not just going to jump right in and get to the quickest part ever you're actually going to pay for it i mean i always say it, like i love laying down love laying down it's the best love sitting down mm -hmm. but like y if you lay down all day it's not as good like when you <sighs> actually do true. shit and you walk around and then you sit so i always say you know you got to stand before you sit you got to sit before you lay down because when you work hard and then you get home and you then you lay down it's fucking awesome and i feel like that's the same way um where like songs you know they should all all the parts should always be great but i mean let's have a little bit of patience here. Mm. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, because I suppose a pre-chorus is the tease before the release, and and they're all there to, to perform a function, aren't they? If you just did a best of of the greatest chorus, the greatest verse, the greatest pre-chorus, and the greatest bridge, the song would be very difficult to listen to. There'd almost be, like, too much? I don't know, though. Is there a song that has that, like... That's the thing, though. It's just like you want all of your parts to always be great. I'm not saying that you don't, but Let's it's just like you were saying. Let's try and build a song based on yeah. the very, very best. What's the best? The best verse that you've ever heard. The best verse that I've ever heard. Um, I'm always going to default to like Beatles probably whenever I hear best. But Okay. So which one? Oh, man. Melody wise. <laughs> penny Lane, but I mean Penny Lane is a good one. Um, so the Penny Lane is the verse, right? I'm not even a huge Penny Lane guy. I love Penny Lane, but like that verse, I mean, okay. it's. Oh, but is I mean, that the pre-chorus though? The da da da. That bit there. Then it, no, maybe the pre-chorus would only be. Da -da -da. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, I mean, so we're going to go yeah. Penny Lane. What's the next bit? <laughs> and then we got, okay. <laughs> okay. So instead of a da -da at the end, we need to find the ultimate pre-chorus. So what's the best pre-chorus you ever heard? And please say the touching me, touching you bit from I Believe You Think I'll Love. It's got to be that, isn't it? Yes. So we throw touching me, touching you right after that. So what's the next bit? We might have to get off of Penny Lane because it's got a little bit like what if because if we did like if you if you think Beatles like, you know, when I was younger, so much younger than today. I mean, help. Help's amazing. Okay. So we'll I mean, do help. Who, yeah. Um, and it's pretty much one note, but the lyric, and I feel like, um, is just, you know, I mean, who doesn't need fucking help, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, actually, when you think um, about it, that's a bit like there, everybody hurts, isn't it? Kinda. But it's like, when I was younger, so much younger than today, I never needed any help in But now this day's gone, not so self assured. Now I found me, open up the door. Bone to bone, touching you. Then we go into the touching you, touching me. Yeah. Um, and then what's the greatest then, chorus of all time? Let's see. What is the best chorus of all time? Uh, is it Don't You Want Me, Baby? <laughs> <laughs> You got to touch me, don't you want me, baby? That's actually a, that actually works. I'm not sure about yeah. the help verse, but I suppose we've we've understood. No, help's ourselves. not the greatest verse ever. I mean, verses like I'm just trying to think like because there's songs that I, you know it's hard to think of these offhand. Um, I'm sure I'll think of 20 of them when we're done with this. But yeah. that like you love the verse, but you don't think the court like you it, mm. you wish it had a better course or you know mismatch songs but um, if we were david know. guetta then and we had all of the an infinite amount of the world's songs that in fact every song has ever been re recorded at our disposal we would build a song with the penny lane or help verse the pre-chorus from i believe in a thing called love and then the chorus from human leagues don't you <laughs> want me baby 
<laughs> and then you know stick a middle eight from any brian adams song in there and we're laughing right maybe the one from um the robin hood soundtrack song um yeah possibly and then keith scott bringing in that just tasteful Okay, so we're going to keep him in for the solo as well. It's brilliant. Don't think I'm not going to bring up Keith Scott. Yeah. But as far as I can, I, I would say this on paper. We already talked about this song before, but the bridge in Under Pressure, I think, mm. is the best bridge of all time. Yeah. Okay. I mean, turn away from it all like a blind man. And then once it goes you. Into the, straight into the, oh, yeah, sorry. Come on, man. You know, but like the, why don't we give ourselves one more? I mean, that's chills. Yeah on the arms yeah, you know that's hair standing up mm. um every time i remember the first time i heard it and that part to me it's just it's so fucking heavy and the melody is amazing yeah. and then you know true so i would say the best bridge of all time i could identify for me is is under pressure okay right so we'll stick under pressure bridge brilliant and um, i think the point i was trying to make was that if you did do a best of then it would be too much like the red and pink um opal fruits Mm -hmm. But actually, I think I've. I have to concede that it is a great approach. Because you don't need. I mean, <laughs> in in for example, under pressure, what is the yellow or orange bit? In the bridge, I would say it's turn away from it all. So that's like the but that's the man. pink and yellow, pink and red, right? No, because that part's good, mm. but it's setting up the. Why don't uh, we give ourselves oh, I see. more money? Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's the pink and red, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. You know, but I'm also full of shit always. You got to remember that, and as are you, I'm sure. Where it's just totally like shit, yeah. I love candy. I mean, pop music is candy. Like, yeah. and I love I love catchy. You know, so it's just like I want it, but I mean, I just feel like there's a there's a real there's. I always talk about it. It's hard to define, but what's real and what isn't. And you could just you could just tell when something's full of shit, mm -hmm. and you could tell when it's coming from a genuine place, you know, and 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 that's for me is the struggle of just like because when you were in those writing sessions, you just told us this key, this mm -hmm. tempo, mm -hmm. this don't use that word, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Probably either do C G A minor F, which is one five six four, or do the five six one four, you know what I mean? Give me a four chord arpeggio around. Maybe do an edge thing in the verse. Dun, 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 Nobody's dun, dun, ever dun. said that to me in a pop session. But I no one's that. ever said do an edge thing? <laughs> Never said do an edge thing, yeah. But I mean, I try and do an edge thing every time. But the, if anything, they're trying to discourage that. I remember I went to, like, I went to one writing session and it was the opposite of that. And it was, it was, it was, I was working with this bloke called Sam Endicott. Do you know who that is? He was in The Bravery. Really nice I guy. remember the... The bravery, but I, I don't know Sam. So he ended up sort of doing songwriting for um, Shakira and stuff like that. And I went mm -hmm. to a session with him. And I think both of us had been in a lot of sessions and we were both similar types of songwriter. Um, and we were exasperated and couldn't be asked to write a song for Susan Boyle or whoever it was, you know. And we wrote a song yeah. called um, Bikram Yoga Woman. And I think mean, the chorus has got some issues because obviously there was some stuff with the guy Bikram who we probably shouldn't allude to any of that, but there was some weird stuff happening. Um, but it had like, um, so I saw you through my ankles across. Oh, how's it going? Oh, I'll, I'll just recite the lyrics. I saw you through my ankles across a sweaty room, supple, lithe and glistening like a lotus in full bloom. I could never talk to you, the time was never right. Your makeup's always running, and we both smell like shite. And then the chorus was like, uh, oh no, the pre chorus was um, something about perfection. And then I borrowed the Meditate in My Direction from, you know, that song from the Grease soundtrack. And then the chorus was Bikram Yoga Woman, You Make Me Sweat. Bikram Yoga Woman, I haven't even started stretching yet. 109 de or five, however many degrees it is in those places 105 degrees you got me on my knees Bikram yoga woman yes please beautiful and nobody oh, yeah. picked it up and um, Shakira wasn't interested um, <laughs> nobody, Susan nobody Boyle didn't know up. what we were on about you know but it wasn't wasted because I got a chance to recite the lyric to you so that's alright and also it's just like 
I mean, why not just cut it with the darkness? You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. you could, yeah, and and you don't have to put it on the record, but you could play it live every now and then. It could be like just kind of like a, you know, a fan favorite. You know, just a little bit of Bikram Yoga Woman every now and then. <laughs> I feel like it's if country you can't sing about yoga as far as country music okay. goes, but I feel like in that lane, it's like the Red Solo Cup of like a of of new york city drinking a mopa frappuccino kind mm. of song you know talking about bikram here mm. um but like you know i think i have fun you know forever much i i um talk shit on bullshit pop songs i mean it's fun to try to get one you know what i mean yeah, it's it's true. fun to like you know i've got a country song called hogtied that i'll probably put in 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 a video at some point and um it's the core or the verses you might think you got a bad but there's a feller over there with no shirt on his back ain't ain't had a job since iraq his wife ain't coming back but if you ask him if he'll do it all over again he said hell yeah i did i do it for my country i do it for my family for the people that love me for, for my freedom like my father's before me because that's the kind of man i am i'm american I'm like in baseball on the diamond, touch them all. Love the women, cold beer on a Friday night. We could get that hog tied faster than them city boys. Ooh, ain't they so pretty? That's not the kind of man I am because I'm American. Wow, you know, that is so powerful. It's powerful. It's really beautiful, actually. But um, one thing though, what, what does hog tied mean? Is that a sex thing or what? Could be where it's just like we can get that hog tied. So like the chorus is like, I'm like a baseball on the diamond, touch them all, love the women, cold beer on a Friday night, and we can get that hog tied. <laughs> so it's like you know because they're farmers. Well, works as a out. mnemonic motif and a, a, a piece of uh, farming trivia or something. What is it? Hog 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 tied. But what is this? So it's like gesture. Oh, I like um, lasso. Well, this is like you have a lasso, okay, and you're and you got to lasso up some hogs. Nice. You know what I mean? So it's just like oh, that is a sex you, thing then. A little bit. Because yeah. you say I hogs mean, you to, know, to refer to the male member, don't you? You American works members. both works both ways. You know, so it's the it's whoever wants meaning. to take it. You know, so hog Todd, be on the lookout for that. And so Brilliant. whatever so whatever good. song I'm gonna do, whatever country song I'll do a video on next, I'm sure I'm gonna Amazing. highlight hog Todd. Superb. What was your podcast like then? What kind of people were you talking to? Or were you just talking amongst yourselves? I had some people. The So the network that I was on, uh, they they threw a bunch of people my way um, in the beginning. And a lot of them had podcasts that I never listened to. And I would just talk to them like people, you know? <laughs> and then um, I uh, I had a couple people, like a couple buddies from some bands. Um, you were on the list. If I kept going, I was yeah. like, we got to get we got to get Jayhawk in here. Um <laughs> I had uh, I had uh, W Kamal Bell um, came on and he has a uh, pretty big show. Mm -hmm. So I I'd, 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 I'd a couple names, but for the most part, it was like I was saying, it was becoming a little bit too negative for the sake of being negative for me. Mm. Where it's just like, because I really like to dig deep in on a song and yeah. really figure out, like if I'm gonna talk, shit, like I really, um, because like I feel like what you were saying before about how you could see merit in in things as you listen to them mm. but at the same time i know when you're like this is bullshit yeah. you just have it really you just have it buttoned up in a real nice way <laughs> i will go right down the middle and just say this stinks yeah you know what i mean do, yeah so if i'm gonna say that this stinks i want to make sure that i either i feel it in my heart of hearts and here and i could give you a reason why I don't want to just slag it off just to say, like, yeah, this song sucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though it's fun to do that. It's great to do. And 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 I'm not saying that I've like I'm I'm I the point that I'm making is that I just have more fun um doing little animations. Yeah. And like, you know, I like picturing scenarios of how songs were written and you know, I liked I like doing that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I love doing this with you if i could talk to you every week i would like that that's that's not a you know if my podcast was just talking to you every week <laughs> i'd be like all right because you know i love what i love what you do and the fact that you can just kind of like all right let's listen to this fucking theory of a dead man song by the way do you know about theory of a dead man no oh which one is that is that the one 
Oh. Is that the one with the, like a really perfect hairstyle that, that yes. moves? Yes, and more perfect soul patch. Oh, yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, so it looks like he's got a moustache on the wrong lip. And, yes. um I think I, when I was listening to one of their songs, I thought this is either like an ironical pastiche of something or they're the worst people in the world. I think they're the worst people in the world, and think I think so? I know the song you're talking about. It's it's the I'm tired of all the homeless people. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's tired of yeah. homeless people. Yeah, I I'm mean, gonna do a video on. I'm doing a video on that at some point. I'm tired of all the homeless people. I think um, Chad Kruger uh, signed that band, didn't he, to, to his um, music label or something like that? Is that had to something I mean, to do with Nickelback? Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, these guys are out there and I'm, and I only have so much time. I mean, we have to try to get it all in, yeah. you know, it's like, and, and that's why I think that what you do is that you just like kind of the way that you could just sit there, go through it real quick, kind of first takey, all that mm. stuff. And then what, what I do is that, you know, I will spend three months to four months working on one big slammer yeah. of, of just like, okay. So it's like, kind of like, I see you as like the fire like the the jet fighter right. you know what i mean that's like you, there's a bunch of you where it's like you know you're going at the planes of like you know theory of a dead man and uh you know uh morgan wallen and uh, the, all this shit. and you're just like kind of sniping them out and then i'm like the big bomber that <laughs> that's mm. like slow you know four videos a year but they're <laughs> but once i drop you know what i mean yeah, yeah. like that that's kind of how yeah i I, I, I do think like I feel that way about your stuff because when I watch it, it's really inspiring. I had one session where I was on tour somewhere and then the, the hotel room had a bath. Mm -hmm. And it was a joy because I just, I ran a bath and I watched all of your videos and it was beautiful. It that's, really was. That's incredible. And you did the the August is Falling thing, which I never really oh, got yeah. to. That's I mean, I, told, I think I reached out and I said, that's amazing. Thank you. But uh, that was great, and that helped really confuse people. So I, yeah. I couldn't, you know. What's happening with that? Is, there, is that. it still an ongoing concern? Or? Well, so the simple plan, you know, my L4, I had a back problem uh, in the fall, and it's still kind of there, but it really sidelined a couple of ideas that I had. But um, amazing things happened. As you know, Butch Walker yeah. produced that song. The guy on the left that uh, that I just Googled, emo, haircut, he ended up seeing the video and he signed off and said, hey, yeah, I can. you can use my image. Um, so he's on the cover. Yeah. And then I did auditions for August is Falling in Philadelphia and played a show about a month ago and I found the band. And they came together, practiced, and we did a show and I watched August is Falling. Wow. And it was you know, unbelievable and i'm gonna put that in a video and now they're like now they're like self-aware like they're they're um they're off on their own now they're like learning. they sent me a video of them practicing and i just told them guys do it be august is falling but remember the number one rule nothing too good <laughs> right down the fuck right down the fucking middle right down the middle yeah. you know what i mean what would hoppus do right down the middle yeah um and uh, so that's amazing. I guess good managing. From are August you like a, are you are you their? Well, I mean, obviously you're the, the, their guru and their creator, but are you the manager as well? Or are you going to be getting them gigs or? Kind of. I mean, I'm I'm also going to be like if I just I I want to also throw them the songs too. I want to just like you know ah. listen to what they come up with, but at the same time, like it's got to be a certain level mm. of um you know of uh of pretty much bullshit yeah. that i have to like you know gotta be super catchy all that stuff so um you know i'll be ghostwriting some songs in too cool. and hopefully be able to get them on to some festivals that'd be amazing yeah i mean it could happen yeah you know it could easily happen i mean <clears throat> the concept of it's brilliant because it's actually so i mean it's already super dated isn't it the idea of an emo emo band i mean it's yeah, but it's also happening. Yeah. That's, what's so weird is everything is happening. There is just like, like we were just talking about Theory of Dead Man. They're the worst. Like Nickelback, like that's still happening. Yeah. You can write a riff that goes down, 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 down. That sounds like a truck commercial. That works. You can, you can write, um, you know, Bad Bunny. Always going to Wait, that was, right. um, 
what but uh, you're nearly doing a Karib there. A Karib is what was your one? It, is that what Bad Bunny is? I don't use the biggest person in the world. Karib is Karib is like a boo, 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 boo. Crucially, it has a boo, boo, ki, boo, so it's like boo, ki, boo, ki, boo, boo, ki, boo, ki. that's Karib. Yeah. That's but that's like every I mean, you know, you you go to uh any bodega, you go in the song you know, um and uh and I'm I'm not anti at all. But like <laughs> it you sounds know, like you're really into of, it. I am. Um there's a song called uh Ah. Uh, I was in I was in Mexico and there's a song I might hey Carlos Vives he's a Colombian guy <laughs> love this guy the groove on this song is amazing kind of cheesy mid 90s I heard this in a cab and I had to ask who it was you're gonna have to send me that it's not coming through on this thing I think no it's not gonna come through zoom's canceling but, it out Check out Pai Maite. It's kind of cheesy, but the way that it jumps around, yeah. um, and uh, I, I got way into it. The groove, the groove is awesome. Wow, Pai Maite. Yeah, Carlos Vives. Carlos um, Vives. But my point is, is that anything is just like there's songs that sound like uh, there's new wave songs that sound popular. There's emo festivals that are huge that people go to with new emo bands mm -hmm. there's everything is happening i mean lux eterna you know i mean everything everything is happening right True. so it's just like you know it's uh it's 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 a wild it's a wild world as far as like i feel like there is there a scene in music that's i don't know i mean it's just like kind of do whatever you want yeah. you know as long as it's shit, that seems to be the rule as long as it's, I mean, think about your song, right? You're, you're big fucking hit. I talk about it all the time. Yep. Believe in a thing called love. It's your big fucking hit. It's still giving you money, right? This thing is not a conventional song at all. It's weird. Like your songs are so weird. You know what I mean? Like you not, and and I mean that in a, in a, in a, in a good way, of course. Um, I took you know, it as a good thing, like, actually. I don't want to. Yeah. Look, I feel like you songs. can write a pop song whenever you want to write a pop song. Um, but I think what gets you going is like, you know, we're going to take some turns. We're going to twist this thing a little bit over here. And you think I'm going here? I'm actually going here. <laughs> um, and that song, you know, there's a key change in it that you don't really even know about. Um, you know, it's like the melody is eat those three parts, like those songs that we were talking about before. Mm. You know, F sharp. Then you go to E for the chorus, right? That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, where did that come from? But that's, and then, and and it's just kind of like, that song to me is a is about as candy, pop candy as it gets, but there's also cool shit happening. And that's all that I ask. For. That's, that's, that's why anybody I bitch can about shit, for, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's really kind of you to get. Do do this one. Mm -hmm. Finitize this and tell me why this is shit. Justin Hawkins rides again, again. Great song. Great song. It's diminished. Mm -hmm. You you got the diminished in there. Did Beato talk about this? I'm sure he did. He did actually. So That's why I want to get your take on it as a contrasting. All right, opinion. I love it because I love diminished. Yes, um, I do as well. And it's like he described it as half diminished. You now that's see the half diminished double diminished. You know, th there's all these things. Okay, like, what is you know, so when when you say flat diminished seven, flat five, you're talking about um, this is the diminished one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So ba na 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 but they work yeah. over everything. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's yeah. like and you could just move them around. I mean, I would grab my guitar right now, but you won't be able to hear it. But like you can you any just any you could play a C chord. Like play a C chord right now. Bring. Oops, sorry. We'll play any chord. diminished chord. 
it's not really coming through. Even in the future, nothing works. But like, you could play a C and then just play a diminish starting on an F sharp. Then you could play a C, play a diminish one one half step up, and it would sound cool. You know, you could kind of throw them in everywhere. I think that's actually a little oh. bit like um, some of uh, Johnny Nash. Is it Jimmy Nash or Johnny Nash? You know the the reggae artist who was an American man who was allowed to record in Jamaica. You know that guy I'm talking about. He Johnny wrote. Nash. Um, is it Johnny Nash? Not Peter Tosh. Johnny Nash. He wrote the song. I, I think he wrote the song. Uh, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. But he wrote another one called um, the one I'm thinking of is. Um, there are more questions than answers. Pictures in my mind. I'm not sure what the word is. There are more questions than answers. And the more I find out, the less I know. Yeah, the more I find out, the less the I less know. But it's loads I didn't of know it. I didn't hear it until the, the last two lines. I haven't heard that. And that's where the diminished chord comes in, actually. Oh, it's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. And it's reggae. Oh, yeah. Sung I mean, I American. remember Brilliant. the first time, like I, I heard it, and maybe it was probably in the, it was probably in a George song. I mean, George Harrison loved diminished chords. Mm. He told he called them the naughty chords. Oh, um, but like Jeff Lynne loves him. Mm. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, Queen. You know, just mm. those passing chords are the best. I noticed it when um, I was doing something, and say you go and see. For, for, to the half diminished to mm -hmm. D seven in that half diminished, regardless of regardless of what's happening before, like if you're doing like a backing vocal arrangement, suddenly there's justifiably four parts that clash in exactly the same way, and it spreads out through mm -hmm. your mind. And I don't know, to me, it just feels incredible when you hear somebody arranging the four different elements of a half diminished chord there's nothing better yeah it's so much fun to sing mm. like it doesn't happen that often but when you sing it it's unbelievable mm. and i think the best example is like god only knows because it's like you know um i never better done so that's the one diminished there and then da -na 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 -da -na -na -na. And you could do like a half diminished over that second one of them mm. but they just change a little bit you know, but they're different to Mish, but they both work, you know? It's um, beautiful stuff. Good, it's good shit. It is some you really know? good shit. Um, Talking about chords here. Yeah, so, <laughs> so go on. So you you like the diminished stuff. Yeah, so it's, and then what are you ending on an E? An E not, an E minor nine? E minor nine, <laughs> always. E, yeah, E minor nine. It's a good one. Yeah, um, it's probably my favorite Which I e think of as like the Floyd chord. It's mm. like the, Lee, yeah. breathe in the air. You know, where are you at with Floyd? I've never talked to you about that. Do you well, give a shit? I don't know. I I sort of give a shit because a friend of mine, um, Dark Side of the Moon, I never really paid any attention to it until my friend told me the story that he, he had like an old, old 70s stereo. And we lived in like a, a very, very small sort of... Um, What's it called? The cylindrical sort of steeple bit of an of a of a ruined church that they'd converted. So he thought it was haunted, and I think he had a skin full of wine. Went upstairs and put um, "Dark Side of the Moon" on, and at some point the volume control, which was not automated, it was an old old stereo, went full blast and started cranking "Dark Side of the Moon" super loud, and he watched it move like that. That made me interested in the in the music of pink floyd and so, so it just moved on its own yeah he said it he said it just turned it up turned and itself it, up and was, and dark was, side of the moon tar, turned itself up yeah it demands to be heard it i mean i'll say this about it it's good it's, <laughs> it's a good it's it's you heard it here it's what? a good it's a good album it's a good record is it it's a good record see a lot of people will say that like you know i i a lot of I'll take a lot of shit about like, you know, you're uppity, pretentious, you know, mm. hipster kind of shit and all that stuff. And mm. I'm like, listen, Sid Barrett, mm. Pink Floyd, it's fine. Mm -hmm. They give me Gilmore all day. I'm, t you know, and that's not the cool thing <laughs> yeah, to say. Yeah, but how it's about, not, but I mean, I, I think it's, more. when I was a teenager and I gave more of a shit about Pink Floyd, I was definitely more in the Sid Barrett stuff. 
I've got a bike. You can ride it if you like. It's got yeah. a basket, a bell that rings and things to make it look good. That's a great song. Sort of. Yeah. I mean, in like, interstellar overdrive. I mean, it, it's, I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and Langan would fight me until we, we would, we have this fight. You know what I mean? Mm. He's a uh, piper at the gate. I mean, that's, he's mm. that. And, and I'm like, no, man, give me animals. You know, <laughs> like I want to hear, cause here's the thing about Gilmore. His voice is real good. Mm. I mean, it's when he comes in with the, there is no place you are seen. I mean, that's pretty awesome. That's him you know? singing that, is it? Wow. Yeah. I never knew. But I mean, Pink Floyd, uh, they don't need our help. They're, they're, no, they're doing it. <laughs> Trying to turn the kids <laughs> onto this fresh new band. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, uh, I feel like Floyd is, is, would that be called dad prog? Is that dad prog? Is it even I prog? I guess so. I guess they are a prog band, but I've never really seen them. Like, I guess like metal, there's elements of, of prog, but I feel like they're just probably in the dad band. It's a dad band world, isn't but isn't Stone Temple Pilots a dad band at this point? Like, isn't, you know, what, I don't it, know, what is it? No, because dad, I think dad, dad rock has a really, a really particular flavor, doesn't it? I mean, it's credence, right? That's it's credence, dire straits. Um, I do right. think it's Pink Floyd. Can um, we talk a little bit about Dire Straits? Because we both love Dire Straits so yeah, much. Yeah, let's talk about Dire Straits. <laughs> I love Mark Knopfler so, so much. Do I. He's my favorite. I he, think I think I finally have identified my favorite hmm. song, Tunnel of Love. I don't think that that song could be beat. Yeah. I don't know. Do you know I, what I, I always mean, think about that solo? The solos are made. Which one? But like, the when we were kids. Yeah. And then... That that solo there, the one that sort of drives it home. Yeah, I um. But it's crazy, like how it goes into that. Don't don't Where does that where does that part come from? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, but the other thing is, it's like what are the four chords that that he's soloing over there? Um. I guess at the end it's like because it's over the like we always do 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 city to me when we when we were kids, kids. it'd yeah. be like a I think it's in B flat but like okay um hold on one second la, la, la. I can always do me. So it's like the Spanish city to yeah. me. So it's like if we're gonna be out of this thing, it's it's like one girl you look so pretty to me to the six like mm. you always do D minor and then B flat four mm. num, 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 or five. Mm. Num, 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 num. Yeah, when we were kids with the sus on the so end. This so this is what I always say to bring it all. Oh, back you've got around. the sus at the end. What I always think about that solo is. The chord sequence is the chord sequence. You see it coming a mile off. It's going mm -hmm. round and round and round. But to find a melodic path through that that's always fresh yes. and never gets boring and is mm -hmm. so expressive, I always feel like it's my father and he's standing there showing me like a, a field and he's saying, look at this, son. Look at all these different things you can do with this space. You know, you can have this over mm. here, and you know, if you wanted to plant some stuff there and, and landscape, landscapery there, you can put a pool over there, and just laying out like a, a plan. Because it's so inspiring to hear somebody never get tired of the same. You know what I mean? Like the, the, that sort of yeah, because cool. like that first, it's like bam, bam. And then he does the you know, I mean, it's just like the phrasing, and this is why there's a very um, popular guitar player that's uh, you may have done a video on him. Who's this? And uh, he's a very popular guitar player. And, uh, I feel like he's not popular in your world. Is this why you're whispering? He's a very popular guitar player, and people—he's very influential 
and uh, he's he's very popular. He has his own Paul Reed Smith guitar, and <laughs> he hits the notes, and he sometimes he plays them a little bit lighter and soft. Yeah, he there's has dynamics the right in phrasing. Playing, yeah. yeah, you know who he can rips off every fucking day mm-hmm. is Mark Goddamn Knopfler. Yeah. Now I know that Mark Knopfler is not underrated by any means. I'm not saying that he is. Yeah. But I still think he is actually. I, of course I think he's underrated. He is. I, and he he, he's is, done but he's done that he's, to himself, you know. I remember there was this thing oh, one of those sort of charity all the guitarists get together. They do a number. Brilliant. All right. And you've got um, Eric Clapton. He's getting up and he's like, oh, yeah, I'll do some blues licorice here and I'll do some fast <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, somebody else is sort of stepping up and they're, they're giving it all the things. And, and then I'm like, come on, Mark. Come on, boy. Show them. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got his headband on and he comes out and yeah, he's like, sure uh, he does. <laughs> yeah. And he just does something like this. It's exactly the right thing, but it's not. Yeah. You don't want him to do the right thing. You always want him to sort of go, it is I, Mark Knopfler, regard my headband and check out this technique and do something f-ing amazing and show people that he's the best. But he never did that. He always sort of just, I don't know, um, deliberately understated stuff because nobody else was doing that in those instances when he had a chance to shine. He, he would always sort of hold it back and... Man, I respect the shit out of that, but at He's the time the I was frustrated. You know? Yeah, I know, because you want him to rip because you yeah. know that he could. Because I want to go back to school. I, like, the next day I wanted to go to school and say, this is, that was what I was talking about. Did you see that? And everyone was like, yeah, I saw that, but what, you, what were you talking about? <laughs> I still didn't know what I was talking about. It but you, you, you give him a live consultant, you know, from like 89. 80 you know give them a live sultans and they're gonna see it you know i mean he stretches that thing out five extra minutes <laughs> listful yeah. i mean it is just unbelievable the alchemy live version oh i love alchemy live oh it's incredible oh my god um and like you know but what's the, the best doesn't... moment on there the best moment on there is private investigations surely investigations it's a fucking great investigations but i mean i think i have to keep it like straight chomper straight up, chomper right down song. the middle in the Sultans, there's a buildup that he does before it, like it does the whole thing with a and then there's an extra solo. Mm. But there's just this and he gives a look back and he's just like Watch like, me for the changes, boys. Like this this is about to happen. But the whole time, and you know, like listen, guitar face, I get it. You know, we all do it, whatever. You know who doesn't? Offler. He's up there fucking shredding and he's so comfortable. It's like he has a pair of slippers on in his living room. <laughs> like he's at Live Aid. No distortion on his guitar. None. Like the cleanest fucking guitar in front of the world at Live Aid. He's just up there. <laughs> yeah. No pick. No nothing. Nah. Just like no distortion. Clean. And it rocks. You know what I mean? Yeah. That to me is 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 the ultimate inspiration. I mean, yeah. this guy has no distortion, no pick, and he Rocks. So is this what unites you and I then? Our favorite guitar player is Mark Knopfler. I mean that and I think a couple other There's a few know. other things, obviously. Yeah, yeah, and hating most of the things. But yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> You know, um Do you know Richard Thompson? Do you like his music as well? Yeah. I mean, I'm not like I don't go as deep. Okay. Um, I think some but of if you stuff, were to um, give me I'd, I'd put him up there as well. Like Richard Thompson, Mark Knopfler. I mean, those those guys, they just approach it in... Like Richard Thompson approaches things in a... In a I, I think the sort of melody choices he makes are just always surprising and always mm-hmm. just the right thing. But Mark Knopfler is like... I don't know. It's just that feeling you get when you hear... I don't know. That's like a be- It's like a beautiful. Some when you hear a guy playing a guitar with no distortion and just. I know, his- but <laughs> I mean, also it. giving giving you everything you want. It's like you yeah. as a lead guitarist, and you know, and and me, you know, I've I I play lead in some bands and stuff like that. And when you're when you're laying down solos, it's just like solos are tough. I mean, because you want. 
world needs fast. You have you need to have something fast. We all love it. Don't know yeah. why, but we do. We want to hear something that we can't even hear the notes really, but mm-hmm. we want to hear just see that you could do it. It's almost just like prove to me that you could go fast and then you could play as slow as you want. You know, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's what Knopfler does the best, where he's just like, listen, I could rip this shit if I want, but I also want to give you this melody line at the end of Romeo and Juliet that's going to make you want to fucking cry in your pillow. All night. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm in tears already. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned so, Romeo and Juliet, because I, I love the, I just love every guitar part on there. I think it's so, it's, so it's amazing, crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Have you figured it out? Did you ever play it? Yeah, I did. It's so fun. I yeah. mean, it's in like F. You have to get capo with an F. Uh, it's capo on e, three, F. isn't it? Or oh, is that right? Uh, it's capo on three, and then you tune the E down to an F or something. Yeah. You, you, the E goes down, the A goes down. Yeah. I forget the name of the tuning, but... Well, I um, do it, and I, I I got so confident with it that, that I found myself um, just doing it way too fast. But I think it rocks way too when much. Yeah. It way too much. <laughs> Definitely. Like, and somebody said to me, like, when I do it, and I do, 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 I just end up with this really smug expression, like, check me out. I'm a hot shit. Yeah, kind of. Here's the thing about Romeo and Juliet, though, that I don't know if anyone's ever talked about. I think our boy, uh, MK, you know, was, I think he was digging um, Born to Run, the album, a lot, oh, because wow. it's, it's Jungle Land. Are you familiar with Jungle Land? No. The... So there's a Bruce song, Jungle Land. I think it's the last song on, on Born to Run, the album. Mm-hmm. The piano part. No. Yeah, it's, it's Mark. Mark, uh, you know, yoink, yoinked that one a little bit. Jeez. Um, but they played it on, but Bruce had it on piano. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't count. That's okay then. And Romeo and Juliet is the, you know, is still a better song. Yeah, superior me, song. So it, it gets to keep that kid. I can't do the love song like the way you used to. like I do on the TV. I can't do love song like the way it's meant to be. And All I do is kiss you. Through the bars of Ryan, <laughs> baby, I do the stars. We every time. If there's one bullshit line in that song, I think it's the stars with you. The, the, is that I because of the, the Orion stuff? You. Yeah, because it's just like, and all I do is miss you. You know, in the way it used to be. I mean, this is fucking mm. brutal. Mm. And all I do is keep the beat. Do you know in what? The bad company. I'll tell um, you how good that song is. Talking about like a, a a love tragedy and all that stuff. It used to move me, and I was mm-hmm. a child. I was a virgin child, no girlfriend, not even close to. I mean, I was a decade away from having a girlfriend, and I still. You felt it. I felt it. Like yeah. I was heartbroken. I was like, F- "What am I going to do?" <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, it's amazing though. As a kid, maybe because we're watching our parents live like what adults do and like what being a human is. But it's just like mm-hmm. I remember watching these sitcoms when I was like eight years old. Like I'm watching Cheers. Like what? <laughs> like what? And you already what, knew what? what it would be like to be a washed up alky. Yeah, indulging in. <laughs> But it's like I'm watching all of these sitcoms with these married men that are just like, you know, oh, God damn it. You know, I got to listen to this wife again. Or it's just like, what am I relating to in any of these yeah. things? Why was I watching Night Court? I mean, night. this is a show about court. You know, I was seven. I was like, yeah, I'm going to watch Night Court because it's on, I guess. I don't know. But it's kind of like the same thing with like, you know, you breaking down because like mm. Knopfler, obviously, some some lady. You know, handing him one with that, you know, was just like, oh shit, you know, she was looking, she was looking for more of. I don't think the headband. She wasn't into the headband, man. You know that you know? tunnel of love stuff as well. That's um, that's Spanish cities. You know what that's referring to? That's the. So I watched the thing. Did you see the show with him and Brian Johnson from ACDC? Oh, I haven't watched it. No. no it's incredible. It's Brian Johnson. Did I talk about that, Mark Knopfler. Z- because they're, they're from the that, same part of the world, right? Up that in place, Northeast. the Spanish, yeah, they're down there at that Spanish city. Yeah. That's where, like, you know, there's a whole monument to them there now. Yeah, I of guess. course there is. But it's well, Brian Johnson. He's like, oh, Mark, it's good to see you, buddy. You're looking good, lad. <laughs> I'm like, how is Brian Johnson? <laughs> Brian Johnson is amazing. Yeah. I love, wait a second, Brian Johnson. Okay, so this is what I want to get to, and I'm sure we need to wrap up because we'll go on forever. We'll be all right. Even though it's your show. Okay, so. It's your show. Yeah, here's the point. Here's one thing I did want to talk to you about. Mm-hmm. So you do the Foo Fighter, you do you do the Taylor Hawkins thing. Yeah, you know, you're you 
um, did so, you know, you got the call and you should have got the call and you fucking nailed it, right? And you got out there and that must have been amazing. First of all, I just want to talk to you about that. The it was experience utterly of being amazing. There. It really was. And, you, you know, you're, you're in the wings um, and then you take shit because you didn't know the words to back and back, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm seeing you taking shit. For not knowing the words, people are like, he doesn't know you shouldn't be singing back of black. And you know, he doesn't know the second verse to back of black. Nobody knows the second verse to I don't back think of Brian black. knew it. I think that's why he wanted me to no. come up and do it. Hold on one second. Let's let's just look up what you didn't know. <laughs> I've been listening, I've heard that song probably five thousand times in my life. Me too. Right? The only thing we care about is the riff, you know, and the and the where the notes are it's just where the notes are it's not what what the notes are here's what you didn't know i'm back in black of a cadillac number one with a bullet i'm a power pack yes i'm in a, in a band bang. i know that bit because I, I think i actually started to find my way back at that point in a band with a gang you've got to catch me if you want me to hang right in a bang not a band i'm i thought i'm, I was in, a band. Band. I'm in a band a gang. they gotta catch me at the water hang. Um, because I'm back on the track and I'm beating the flack, you oh. know, nobody's going to get me on another rap. Like, no, this doesn't matter. You could have been up. To, all you need to do is. I was, uh, I was pretty pissed off of him actually, because it was kind of like he, he really insisted on me coming up and I was like, but Brian, I don't know that second verse. Right. I, I think I'd be all right on the first verse, but even then well, I don't think it's the sort of thing I should be sack. singing really. But you then know? it was like, I, mean, I, I thought, if I don't, if I don't agree to do this thing, I mean, and the weird thing was having a week to prepare for all the other bits I was doing, the Van Halen bits and the, the right. Queen bits and all that. Yeah. And then having like 20 seconds to prepare <laughs> for the, to sing a song that I don't know the second verse of. I think I but, should have said no. I should have just legged it. I, how do you say no to Brian Johnson? Well, that's the thing. This but, is what Dave Grohl said you, to me, like, because he, he came over and he said, "Well, look, if Brian's asking you to do it, you should do it." I think so. I, you got to go with Grohl on that one. Yeah, Grohl's I mean, always right about that stuff. Here's the thing: it's just like, again, it, it ain't blowing in the wind. Like this is black and black. Like I've never known that the <laughs> flag. Nobody's gonna get me on another rap. I'm beating the flag. Like, what is it? You know what I mean? It's like nobody is. Oh man, what's your favorite line in Back in Black? Is it so? Look at me now. I'm just making my play. <laughs> like, yeah, you don't I even do know play. what he's saying. I love the play. Line. It's just you want Back in Black. That's it. So Brian Johnson comes up to you and he goes, Ah, maybe you want to sing the second verse of Back in Black. And you're, no, it's more like this. It's like, a, oh, just in me, lad. Oh, brilliant! You've got to come up and sing the second verse with me. And I, uh, I, uh, now, have you met him before? No. That was the first time, and it was like okay. So and then afterwards, he was telling me. He said to me, um, "We uh, oh, we should do oh, we should do. We, we're like the new uh, uh, the Everly Brothers. That's what he said. But we were like the <laughs> Everly Brothers. <laughs> you be Don, and I'll be Phil. It's fucking brilliant. You know, of course, it's unreal. So and, it's you like know, you... another weird thing was, I don't know, I don't know why an arbitrary amount of time passed, probably. Let's say 50 days pass from that moment. My phone rings. It's a Florida number. And it was him. <laughs> I didn't even know he had my number. And then uh, we just chatted for a while. And it was all just like, how are you doing? Man? All that sort of stuff. It's just pure. To... What was it like having Brian Johnson on the other line here? I mean, I mean you know. It was unbelievable. You're, I mean, ta like... you're talking to me right now. You you had a phone, you know. Oh, maybe just I'm down in Florida. I mean, <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, that's fucking Brian Johnson. Yeah. Brian Johnson's cool. He gets way too much shit. No, he's not Bon Scott. Nobody is. Bon Scott's fucking incredible. Bon Scott mm. is like, his voice is just like from the gates of hell and heaven at the same time. Mm. You know, it's like, there's no way you can beat Bon Scott. But Brian Johnson, he's fucking cool, man. He's he a legend in his own right. And, yeah. you know, obviously receiving a phone call from a legend is always a thrill. That's a you know? But you know what? I was upset that you had to take just a little bit of shit for that because it was such. I know how how uh, how much you nailed it and how special it was. Yeah. That just to have a little bit of stink on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Stink, it's like life. Exactly. I mean, life, as I as I walked out there, I thought this is this is how I throw away what's been a brilliant day. Oh, and as I was walking yeah. out there, I already knew. I already knew. It's like it, it's gone. 
Yeah. You know. Well, that's what I want to say to you now, even months later, is squash that because it does not it does not salt i I was definitely i was carrying that around for a bit it was annoying but the thing is um the thing is it was such a special day it wasn't about that anyway i mean it uh, i just i I feel like it was um one thing that came out of it was an incredible photograph of us fighting over a microphone and that's like yeah you know i mean and i'm i'm honest like it's really hard for for people to i find a little bit of stink in everything that i ever do <laughs> where i'm just like and i could focus on it just a little bit mm. if it's in one of my videos and i know that something spiked or something wasn't there or it's a little too long if i play a perfect set on guitar but then i i clam just a little bit on one solo mm. it ruins mm. me you know and i've been like trying to get better at that as as the years go by and i always have the people that say like you know you need to realize that it was good it was good it was you can you can allow it so it sometimes it's hard for me to hear that on my own take my advice i'm not using it yeah but i will tell you that that does not fucking matter back in black lyrics are nobody know nobody knows those lyrics <laughs> what i should have done is i should have gone out there and rapped something that i do know you know like uh what do i know I should have gone out there and just done like I'm J to the U to the S to the T. I'm Justin Hawkins. And yeah, this is me. And you know, that's just me. Properly... <laughs> and then maybe maybe Brian could chime in on that. That's me. That'd be my hype man just for a verse or something. But, you know, we, but we didn't have time to plan it. That's that's the issue. But the same people that are giving you shit are the same people that said that Wolfie's solo was pre-recorded. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Like that's that's yeah. the kind of. Shit. And That's, Wolfie was a pheno- He's just brilliant. I mean, that how guy, about Wolfie? How about him? He's, he's incredible. Doing great. He's certainly he's so doing nice great. as well. He's doing he's great. He's nailing it. To be the kid of Eddie Van Halen and play guitar, he is nailing it. Mm. Just as a person, you know. Yeah. He's uh, like you know, and I'm not really paying attention all that much but every time that i see whatever he says here and there i'm like yep he's that, so that's a guy that takes shit just on account of not being prepared to sort of re rehash his father's catalog when he's an artist in his own right and he wants to do his own music and people have really given him a hard time it's unbelievable i mean he, he just won't he can't he can't escape online mauling no matter what he posts and no you know and I don't I think because his dad, I mean, Eddie is just like, yeah, he's that, almost I become mean, like he, a Yoko Ono type. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I fully kind of, there's nothing he I can mean, do. Yeah. I mean, look, what do you want? But then he did it. He gave you what he wanted. I mean, he, he yeah. ripped fucking Hoffer teacher. And he like, yeah, it. He, was it, so he could good. do it, hmm. you know? And I got to say like that Hopper teacher, like it's in the Jeep. Like there, there was like a little bit of something there that was just like, holy shit. Like it, mm. it's, it felt like he had the groove Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i've you know you've heard that song being played by a million different people but it was cool to to watch him play it i don't know if there's any footage available of it but we did um panama in uh in the la one Oh man, I'm a big time. I'm way panama over hopper teacher so i'd be way into hearing that we did we did panama i think we just did panama and hopper teacher Okay. In LA, but I mean, you know. Did he hang out with Baz at all? Did he hang out with uh, Sebastian Bach? Oh yeah, just momentarily. Yeah. Oh I hey so. man! No, what's up? He's he had heavy to be duty. In, a, in, in his moment playing an arena again. You yeah. know what I mean? He, he had did to be say bombed. like, um, please. He said something like, um, "Everybody, show some appreciation for me." <laughs> I just, so I'm missing the point of the event somewhat, but it was funny. You know. <laughs> no, it's about Sebastian Bach singing one verse <laughs> of a fucking Black Sabbath song that nobody knows. <laughs> it was about that, yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's exactly what it was about. <clears throat> oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Anyway, I, pre- I really appreciate that. Uh, I feel comforted. I mean it. I absolutely mean it. Hang your head high, man. You, 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 you did a great job at that thing. As I knew you would. Because you're one of the best f***ing front men in the world. That's really kind of you. Thank you. I mean it. Is, I've seen it. I've, I've, I've seen it. <laughs> you're f***ing, you know, I say this all the time. Listen, I'm sure you've heard it before, but I was backstage with you guys. A, you're an amazing front man. Your band rules. Every, it rocks. It's a great show. It's an amazing show. Backstage, you're the closest thing to 
fucking real spinal tap I've ever experienced <laughs> in my entire life. Because the, I don't know if I even ever told you this story. We're hanging out backstage and your TM or your manager came into the room and was just like, guys, we've got way too much on the rider, way too much on the rider. And every night I'm throwing away all of this. We don't need all of this on the rider. And who's eating these cashews? Nobody's eating, you know, and then what could we, we've got to get rid of this one or that one. And then you and Dan or something was like, you know, we'll get rid of the cashews. Nobody eats the fucking cashews. And then Frankie pops in and goes, I eat the cashews. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. He appeared out of nowhere. I eat the cashews. <laughs> you guys are fighting over cashews. It was awesome. Okay. Yeah. The, the rider debate uh, trundles on, actually. It's an ongoing thing. It's a real saga. Yeah. But it's we've, just so much fun for we've us. We've settled on almonds a- now. So. Okay, you're all... <laughs> all you eat the cash. Like, <clears throat> it was like timing that, you know, it's like almost vaudeville. Like yeah. the way that he just came in, popped in his head, all you eat the cashews, and then left. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, Rufy's just like drawing a drum pad. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I know you got. I know you want to go, but I've got, I've got a handful of yeah, really go ahead. pertinent questions do. that came from fans actually. So you're described as a YouTube personality on Wikipedia. How do you feel mm-hmm. about that title? Uh, you know, mixed bag. <laughs> mixed, mixed bag. bag I've you seen know, you because I- last time I saw you, we went to that bar in somewhere in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and I think I came outside and saw you walking down the road. You had the, the, I think you had like a, uh, what's it called? A Baker Boy hat. A, I would imagine you that. You had I'd a jaunty up. stride. Your gait, you seemed so light and so, I don't know how to describe this. I, I felt like something in your YouTube success has manifested in your, your daily existence and you just walk down the road like a star. You know, I thought, oh my God, Pat's different somehow. You know? Wow. And I wondered if that well, was part of the, because you're probably getting spotted, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit. Um, it's I, I get on a plane. People sh- uh, have have shouted Beato. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> far out. Yeah, it's 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 pretty far out. And to be honest, I mean, I am not going to be too cool about this. It's amazing. It's mm. absolutely amazing that I've been at this for so long. I've always wanted a life in entertainment in some sort of way, and. Uh, my my joke has always been I've, I was I wanted to be in a band, and then you know as I was looking in the mirror, and the hair kept going down the drain. I was like, maybe the maybe comedy is. This? <laughs> I'm like I like I like music, but maybe, maybe maybe it's maybe it's comedy. Um, and so like I think that uh by the mid 30s I was just like I'm not I can't get a job I can't I can't get like a regular job. Sorry, Kim. You can't do that. I have to like just chase uh whatever and um I think that starting up the YouTube and and you know nobody watching the first couple of videos nobody even watched the one that you were in um None taken. until I put out the Weezer one and then you know but to have people actually paying attention to what I'm doing in a world that so many people are trying to get just somebody to pay attention to you for me it, it's it's been amazing um and also like uh like a dream come true in a way, really. Um, I've got to go on. I'm talking to you right now. I've got to go on all these shows, these other podcasts that I love, and um, you know, and I get to blend music and comedy, uh, which is what I've always wanted to do. So uh, it's it's been pretty. So maybe that's why I did see a little like it. And but at the same time, it's a pain in the ass because you got to keep coming up with the shit. Yeah, true. But you didn't <laughs> seem weighed down by that on the night I saw you, and I really thought. I don't know. You had a different energy about you. I'm really proud of you and your success. It's awesome. Well, thank you. Congrats. It means a lot. And I like to try to get it, you know, on my Patreon, who said that, um, one thing I like to do is I do a thing called What Makes Your Song Stink, where I listen to everybody submit their songs, and I and I critique them in real time, And but we all listen in the chat together. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, But those people get to have other people listen to their songs, which is all we ever really want, yeah. you know? So, like, whatever little bullshit, that I get, I try to like, I'm trying to like give back to the, you know, in, yeah. in the community that I have of all everybody that watches my stuff. It's, it's pretty cool because here's the thing about what we do, Justin, when 
we 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 are aligning our 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 crowd where it's just like i know that they don't like kid rock i know that they don't like three doors down i know that they don't like train i know that they think that all of that's bullshit mm -hmm. so we're kind of it's a great filtering system yeah. of you know of like this is who well you have you a know, discerning fan base there don't you that, that mm -hmm. would appreciate something that isn't those things <laughs> yeah mm. Very cool. Uh, okay, here's some more questions. What, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this exactly as it's written. What okay. are the worst things about the music industry? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, that bullshit gets to the top time and time again that the same song is always, you know, a hit and that's what's manufactured. Mm. I think the material, you know, I think the fact that like, oh, look at that singer. It looks like she's attractive. I mean, but <laughs> at the same time, it's just like, yeah, I get it. I mean, showbiz, right? You ever watch a movie that doesn't really have a, a handsome actor or a, or a, you know, we're kind of like, who the f is this? who's this? I got to look at this person. So I get the, you know, the looks part of it. Of course, it's always been there. It always, <laughs> it always will be. But um, I'm always saying that no. when I'm at the movie. I got to look at this person. What's this? <laughs> right. I got to stop um, watching the art house movies. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean it's 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 terrible. It's always been. Um, like my father said, musicians are a notch below carnies, and I think that the uh, <laughs> and he is one. And uh, <laughs> and I think that the music business people are just you know they're grifters, you know, mm. um, and they'll sell whatever they can, and they'll sell their soul time and time again to uh, suck in somebody. You know, we could have this. Well, let's have a fifteen second conversation. Go on. I say. Um, there's no artist development anymore. Hmm. And you say, yeah, there used to be artist development. Okay, ready? Okay, yeah. There's no artist development anymore. Well, there used to be artist development. You used to listen to the whole entire record, and now it's just... Oh, uh, yeah. Now you just go on the Spotify and choose the ones you like, and you don't listen to You don't even know the names of the songs yeah. that you're listening to. I think yeah. it's weird because I actually think that I thought I, I'm I I am a member of an albums band. We make albums and we try and make them as though it's a vinyl release. You know, we put the ballad mm -hmm. at the end of the first side and the ballad at the end of the second side. We try and do it yeah. the way Aerosmith used to do it. And mm -hmm. then, but even I don't listen to albums. I know, and you don't even listen to your friends' albums. I'll no, I'll, I'll, I'll dub down on that. You don't even <laughs> listen to your fucking friends, and nobody. Hey, that's not true. You don't I either. I listen Who's to ever? all my friends' albums. What are you talking about? I don't listen to any it's, albums. It's true. No, you don't listen to anything. And that's the whole thing. Everybody's checked my shit out. Nobody's listening to anything. Mm. And that's just like kind of... Having said that, uh, I listened to The Queen is Dead by The Smith this afternoon. And I listened to Floodland by The Sisters of Mercy when I'm on the treadmill. So I do listen to albums in certain circumstances, but nothing new. Yeah. It's hard. Albums are on the ropes, man. I mean, yeah. it's just kind of like, you know, with this fucking thing, mm. I mean... It's, I mean, listen, people complain about these things all the time. They're fucking incredible. For the audio <laughs> podcast, awesome. I would like to point out that Pat is holding up his iPhone. Right. I mean, they're awesome. I mean, <laughs> they're also the worst. I mean, I try to keep it in another room when I'm doing work so that I don't, because I can't control myself. None of us can. I mean, it's just endless. It's like, you know, do I really know about High Lie? What, let, let me watch a little bit of High Lie. Meanwhile, like. What the hell is know, High Lie? What's, what is this I'm missing out on? It's a South American sport. So it's just kind of like, you know, they have this big like banana looking thing and they're throwing a ball real fast. And I will just like for an hour watch High Lie, a game I don't even know and can't understand. The banana thing sounds cool. Oh, I'm going to start watching that today, I think. Called High Lie, right? But meanwhile, you know, I don't know, Built a Spill, a band I like, put out a new record probably six months ago. I still haven't heard it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know? Shit. But I'm trying I'm to think trying. what the what's the last album I actually sat and listened to that was released recently. What, have I done that lately? I <sighs> I really like that Viagra Boys record. I know I talked about them before, but um, Cave yeah. World that that one all the way through does it for me. Okay. I, I really I've 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 listened to that, and and the, and I do listen to. Um, but I also fall back to my old stuff. Like I'll listen to Neil Young. I'll listen mm. to Dylan. I'll listen to fucking Knopfler. I mean, I'm listening to like solo Knopfler. Yeah. 
Like, yeah. you know, you listen to a solo now off of the record, throw 30 years on top of whatever age you are. And that's yeah. what happens. I mean, I'm listening to like, you know, uh, sailing to Philadelphia, like, you know, wow, that, that stuff is some adult, <laughs> adult rock. That is so you know? dad. I love it. And I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Mm. You know, but, uh, I don't know. Music, music blows. Yeah. <laughs> So Does the that short answer, answer the question? is yeah. What is so basically the worst thing about the music industry? It's shit. Okay. It's if you had to come up with one golden rule for songwriting, what would it be? No one five six four anymore. Yeah. I would throw it out to space. Can I um, um? Can I add something? A lyrical thing that I would like to eliminate and stamp yes. out. Can people stop rhyming crazy with baby, please? Please. And maybe. Me and Lang have always talked about this. Uh, no more like, and then I'm going to do it until it stops. And then the song stops. Oh, right on the nose. I love those. Yeah, right. But maybe maybe take a break from from the stop, stop. You know I did I mean? one in a song. Uh, it's not out yet. It's coming out at some point. Link won't be in the description, but I don't know at some point it will. And, but as I, did, uh, I did one uh, grinding to a halt. Halt's cooler. Is halt Halt's better? Fine. Yeah. Okay. Good. Love a halt. Yeah. But it's, got, stop, it's got more Teutonic sort of Germanic thing, isn't it? Which I, which I right. really dig, you know. <laughs> got a car alarm going off. I don't know if you can oh, hear cool. that. Sorry no, no. if you can't. It's all good. It's all good. Um, why are the Red Hot Chili Peppers fans so sensitive? Um, you and I have both done videos. Um, yes, we have. And then the videos that we do on them receive a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> critique from mm. uh, RHCP fan. I mean, my issue with Red Hot Chili Peppers is that I get nothing from John Frusciante's guitar playing. And I feel like if we can t call Mark Knopfler an, an underrated player, I would describe John Frusciante as an overrated player. And in fact, I have done that more than once. And they want to fucking kill me. I don't know what the, I'm not allowed to have that opinion somehow. And it's always like, oh, you're jealous because he sold more records than you have. It's like, well, Mark Knopfler has sold a lot more, more, more records than me. And I'm not jealous of him. I love his guitar playing. So that, that argument doesn't really hold any water. But they're just dismissing my opinion, which of course, that's my calling card. That's actually why we're here, isn't it? To sort of share these, you know, Mm -hmm. insights and, and and opinions and i'm not allowed that one and i don't know how you feel about it are you allowed that one do you do you like john frusciante's playing or do you find it to be completely devoid of any expression well the shit that we took for our, our um videos you you went at frusciante i mean you poked the bear that's the like I'll keep i took a, i, I, I a took shit. a mild i took a medium I took a media, like I jabbed him a couple of times. Okay, I gave right. him some stiff jabs. Mm. You you came in with the uppercut, <laughs> you know, um, and I get it. I totally get it, and I do think that he's overrated. Um, I'm uh, we're aligned on that, but I do also think that in that band, he is not. He's if I was ranking them, mm. here's what I'll say: not about the worst. It. He's the second from worst, though. Well, Kiedis, I mean, Tony Kiedis, right? But, like, the point that I made in my video is that, like, the only thing that sometimes makes me, the only thing, like, in, in my, my Danny California point was just, like, it's all a ripoff. It's all bullshit for the most part, that song. The only thing that makes it sound like the Red Hot Chili Peppers in that song to me is Tony Kiedis because he's yeah. talking about states. I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the California. So it's just kind of like, yeah, that's Tony Kiedis. Um, mm. But, I mean, I feel like for Shante, I don't know why he is – so revered I, I i feel like whoever's listening to the red hot chili peppers only listens to the red hot chili i peppers. think that's the vibe i get too i and mean he, i feel like but if I, th you, I think his tone say, is good they, though they, i do think his me, tone is good tone is you know what i think i've, I've said a lot good. of positive things about his tone and i've also said that i admire his guitar collection which i think people took that as a diss somehow but you gotta say it i mean i, I don't i'm not a fan of um a, a very very popular guitar player who has his own which I think is a guitar that, in fact, no rock and roller should ever play. You know, I always think that. Will you, will you say that again? Just, just so maybe I could clip a soundbite here for a video that I might be working on. I feel like there's a there is a very, 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 very popular guitar player who 
you and I probably would recognise uh, some Knopfler influence in a lot of the choices that they make. Um, mm -hmm. But they do so on a PR oh, uh, on a on a type of guitar which I personally don't think any good rock and roller has ever been played on because no rock and roller would ever play that guitar. The reason being it's too polite, it's too easy, it's just, you know, the dynamics and there's no there's no friction between the meat part and the and the wood part. It's all just like so beautifully luthier that you can just it's like playing butter. And I don't want to pay good money to go and see somebody playing butter. I want to see somebody struggling with a paw. I want fighting the feedback from a marshal. I want I want that, you know, I want to, I want the eternal historic battle man versus strings in front of something really really loud i don't want to hear amps underneath the stage or you know amp simulators i want to hear noise feedback s struggle and tone so the one thing that i did say about frushanti that i admired was the tone and the his sort of choice of those old 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 strats yeah his old strats are great yeah so I liked his guitars and, and I like his tone, but I just think when he plays, he doesn't do he doesn't give me any of the. There's no it's vibrato. Like, like this. I can't hear it, but I know what yeah, you're talking about. Like I mean, I see I see you wiggling. He goes like this. Yeah, there's amazing moments. I mean, sometimes like if you take a song like uh, one of the one of the California songs, um, Californication. There's like the dinkiest solo in that song ever. That is and the worst guitar solo. It makes and it makes me think like, wait a second, is this so far out? It's in. Like mm. I honestly have that question when it comes to him. Sometimes. Well, I have heard like, like somebody said to me, it's deliberately, deliberately shitty? minimalist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, or like maybe it's that thing when like you become a, a super accomplished painter and then you just do some naive child like daubings and then that's your phase you know and, and i think that yeah. might have been one of the things that he was exploring but it doesn't stop it from being shit i mean i think i i agree but at the same time i'm like thinking okay what do you have to you know if i i can't believe i'm about to say this but you serve the song like did it serve the song yeah what would, of I, course it I did mean, that's a shitty song that is a bad song, <laughs> right? So it's with a like terrible a, guitar solo. What do you? What more do you want? You know. So it's a sandwich with with like you know fries next to it yeah. or something like that. But having right. said that, I I love the drummer. I just think he's brilliant. Big cat, yeah, Chad Smith. He's amazing. He, I think, and I love Flea. I'm 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 going to say that I, mean, I love this, Flea. This is what I always used to say. That it's an upside down band in terms of like the virtuosity of the of the instrumentation. It's like the the rhythm section is way better than what's happening in the mid to higher frequencies. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Here's what I here's what I got on for Shawnee. God damn it! I can't believe you're bringing us back into this thing. Going to take more fire, but I feel like his tone is good. His guitars are good. Yeah, those things and great what he collection. Likes He's a great good. collector and, what, and curator of yeah. fine instruments. Yeah, and what he likes is good. You know what I mean? Yeah, like he loves. Uh, Funkadelic. He loves mm. Jimi Hendrix. He loves, you know, what he loves is good. Which really right? sets him apart among the strap players. <laughs> <laughs> How many fucking times are we going to hear that? <laughs> like, anyway, I feel like, um, so anyway, that said, you know, he does those like dinky sound and kind of like, bow, 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 right? But also, but when he's doing his solos, he does like a he does like a fast pentatonic lick that is mm -hmm. always kind of the same lick yeah. that he does like with the wah wah ish kind of thing. And they do these long jams before they start and they don't always deliver and they don't always go anywhere. And then they, they don't they don't get into the song right when they should when they do the jams. Um that said, I, I take my first I when if I'm talking about John, give me for Shawnee over Mayer and I said it. But who said who said John Mayer? Did anybody say that? Oh no, okay. nobody's mentioned John Mayer at all, I don't think so far. Nobody said that. Nobody said no. anything about him. But I don't know. I just I think I would take Mayer. I take Mayer. I mean probably. I probably I just don't want him going. I mean, I think anybody this. anybody that's anybody that can do the blues the way nature intended. And you can't argue with Mayer's blues licks. He's got all of them. 
He does. He does have all of them, but it goes. I'm just going to refer back to that wonderful monologue that you went on before. Are <laughs> and a certain rock and roller and a certain all of that stuff. I'm just going to refer to that. And thank you for helping me finish my video. That I'm, working okay. on, yeah, it's a I'm definitely going to put that in there. At least so I, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here we go. What is the biggest overarching theme that contributes to what makes a song stink? I mean, being a piece of shit is a big part for me. You know, you mean the, like in, you, are you talking about art versus the artist? Are you talking about the actual person delivering the song? If they're a piece of shit, then they're most likely to do something that stinks. Yeah, I look for two, two for two, on on a lot of the stuff where it's just like you know when I I go a kid rock a lot. Because I love I just that. Think that. That's he's just some such of a dangerous. <laughs> he's such a dangerous guy. You know, it, the people his fans might be the dumbest people on this planet and that it so for me the what i do with what makes the song stink it's not really about the song that stinks it's the fact that it's popular right okay. so it's just kind of like i feel like as a person with a certain you know and, and and it's hard not to sound like an asshole when you say this but with a certain musical conscience right of like just knowing what what is what what's real you know in a way um and uh it's it's like and then you go into a store you're gonna hear bullshit so like the world is just like a it's a constant away game mm -hmm. you know like you're not walking in you're not gonna hear a cure song for the most part when you walk into a walgreens were you talking about them before or you're not gonna hear a replacement song like i'm never gonna hear bastards and young you know or like a new shit like you know, I was talking about Big Thief before. Like, yeah, I'm not going to walk into a fucking uh, CVS pharmacy and hear that band. Mm. Um, but I am going to hear, you know, whatever Rob Thomas is working on. You know what I mean? Is working on. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of like that's the um, overarching thing. And it's the fact that it's popular. So why? And then that's the world that we live in. That's who we're surrounded by. Mm -hmm. um so it's a much bigger thing than an actual song it's just like why is it but but it's liked you know what i mean yeah and and then those are the people so so the have criteria. you ever have you ever used this expression and you're welcome to use it if you like it and and don't mm -hmm. feel obliged to say you do so what you're talking about is like the zeitgeist but if i may uh offer you this <laughs> the shitegeist <laughs> Shite Geist is pretty good. It's good, isn't it? The Shite Geist is great. So maybe this episode should be called Pat Finity and Justin Hawkins discuss the Shite Geist. The Shite Geist. I mean, you know it. You, you do your, you know, it's just there's so much good stuff that's oh, never going to I'm gonna actually going to write Shite Geist down because I'm looking for songs to write for next Darkness record. Shite Geist. Yeah, that's I'm going to write it down too just so we're both writing down Shite And then we can both, so we've both written down Shite Geist. We're going to use it all the time, right. and we're both going to write songs that include it or are called it. I'll work. I would love to sit down and work on. We could do like in one of the a writing session, and we could we could uh, <laughs> we could write shite guys together. So we got shite geist. What's the BPM? One hundred and thirty. We go for some driving. That's a little too fast. One twenty five. <laughs> I knew let's, I was let's... pushing it. But I, <laughs> okay, I'll meet you in the middle. One two eight. Let's okay. One two eight. We do that. But if we're doing 128, then we have to go in the key of C. 128 BPM, key of C. But right. you're going to want, what key's best for your highest note? Because Mate, I want. Mate, I can sing all the notes. So don't worry too much about that. That'd be all right. Right. I know. I, don't, I know you're not afraid of keys. But like, what's your favorite key? I I only have I consider E to be my favorite, but only as a guitar player because when you're on a Paul, you've got the twenty two frets and you can bend up to the high one, and it gives you another whole octave of possibilities, you know. Right. Um. And all the tricks are in E. I mean, E rules. I was on yeah. a gig once, man, where like it was a blues gig, kind of like sit in kind of style thing, and the keyboard player was calling all these shuffles, and every single song was in an E flat, and I was like, can we just? Can, and I, when I thought about it afterwards, I was like, I should have just tuned down or tune up. And I've got some E flat moves, but like you run out quick after your sixth E flat shuffle. You know what Why I mean? I'm just e like, is it, that's, you know, all he needs to do is transpose the stage piano, doesn't he? Because it sounds like he's just using all the black keys because he's lazy. Yeah. Mm hmm. You know? But uh, yeah, that was a tough one. <laughs> that was that was a tough one. I feel um, for you. But yeah, Shite Geist, we should, we should write it together. Okay, Shite Geist, 128 BPM, key of 
see, you said, and I think you mm-hmm. chose that arbitrarily, but I'm into it. We can do this. Do we do breakdown after the solo or do we do no solo breakdown after the bridge? Repeat the options. So it's it's going to be a breakdown yeah. um, into the chorus, into the final chorus, but do we do it after a solo? Do we do a guitar solo um, or do we do just a bridge and then breakdown after the bridge? No, I think it's verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, bridge, solo. Okay. Oh, we're doing Key outro change. solo. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Key along change. the lines of... Key change uh, on the last solo? No, because I think we should try and find some exploratory tunnel of love type stuff where you and I are exchanging licks mm-hmm. and showing okay. our oh, children what you can do with the vast and, and you know the, the landscape before us and just try and come up with melodic paths and neither of us are allowed to use a plectrum okay wow all right here we go no plectrum allowed and then what's what's the if <laughs> no plectrum allowed is, is our album by the way that's what it should be called should we try to make this song like a bullshit like you know try to sell it song or should we try to make this song like something we love no it should be something interesting something interesting so what's a song like what's a reference song do you think that we should use bohemian rhapsody <laughs> Sure, that's the piece of cake. That's, no, that sounds great. I, mean, I don't know, something like... Um, some, anything from the Cardiacs on land and in the sea. Okay. Anything from that, like something sort of... Or, or Little Man in the House, that, that album. Something super weird, melodic, all the mnemonic devices you know, come flying across all the different sections. Um, massive guitar solo. Played and clean. the goal is to get this to Beato, that he does it. Yeah, so and it's got to have Beato diminished could chord. Tee off on it. Yeah, Beato could tee off on it. Modulations, yeah. you know, sus- suspensions everywhere. Intervallic moves. I mean, I've never heard See, more I don't know what that is. I'll, I'll leave you oh, to that. Oh, he says intervallic so many times. But what is that? Inter- yeah, I guess it's just like going from like a one, like instead of going like do 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 do, be like do 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 do. Aha! Uh-huh. So it's you like, know? um, I would describe that as missing a rung and then slipping down. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you go into Donkey Kong, uh, <laughs> term terminology. Glitching Donkey um, Kong. That's called. Yeah, but we'll do. Yeah, we'll do as many. You know. Um, as many of uh, substitutions as possible, and we'll try to get we'll try to get it to be auto shite geist. Shite geist. Don't tell him, don't tell him I'm involved. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know he's an avid watcher of anything that's got your name on it, so I don't uh-huh. don't know if he'll be able to keep it a secret. Shall I sing the theme tune and then uh, we'll go go and work on this or what? Sounds good. Lovely. Would you like to sing it with me? I would love to. And thanks for having me. Yeah. Cha. So. Let's- Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Pat Finity, legend. Justin Hawkins, legend. Nice one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please tell me what you thought of this conversation in the comments. Um, and don't forget to check out Pat's YouTube channel. Link in the description. Um, see you next Monday for another long form episode. I'll be chatting um, in depth with my producer Jenny Mae Finn um, about downfall and that's I think we're calling the episode downfall and that's uh, that's about what it's like if your reputation has been destroyed and how you hit back from that or perhaps you don't I don't know <laughs> but um, yeah that's something to look forward to um, so yeah adieu merci bien and uh, see you on the ice cheers guys nice one okay.